Hello everybody, Professor Landnut here, and happy holidays, Merry Christmas to all of you. I hope you have a great holiday season, spend time with your family and friends, and try and relax a little. It's been quite a year. So um, for today's uh, installment of Power Tools, of course I was thinking of what to open with, and uh, I couldn't get the snowblower into my office, so I looked around and uh, I, I saw this and I went, well, that's an interesting device. Um, it was a power tool at one point, but it doesn't tell you what time it is, but it keeps track of time. And then I thought, well, what are, where do we go from there? And I guess we went here. For some of us, uh, we still wear a, a wristwatch and it's a beautiful device and changed the world. It's pretty, I guess that's a power tool. Uh, but then I thought, well, also nowadays, really, I want to know what time it is. I kind of take a look at this. And of course, it does all sorts of other things too, obviously. Um, which one's better? Uh, I think they're all awesome. And I, I think that's my point for this installment of the Power Tool series, which I appreciate people are watching and, and getting me good feedback and they seem to be helpful. So thank you. But these Power Tools are 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 right for certain jobs and and the manual other older tools or simple tools are great for other jobs too. So do you use an hourglass or or a smartphone? Uh, it depends what you need to get done. So uh, because this month is our end of year specials uh, for the rest of the month and a lot of people are looking at select suites, pick two or pick four. They're looking at civil or survey or both, which is an incredible combo. Um, but they're also looking at the other four saying, well, do I need these? What's in them? And what I thought I would do this time is just give you an example of, of, of one tool that's in each one of these programs to help you decide if maybe that would be a good thing to add to your select suites. So let's take a look at that. Okay, first up, let's take a look at CADNET. Now, each of these programs have a lot of functionality, of course. Um, but one of the main things that people do purchase CADNET for and add it to their suite is for PDF import. So you have a PDF, you need to work with it to create surfaces or whatever you need to do. And it's hopefully a vector. If it's raster, we, it's not going to help us. If it's a vector PDF and preferably a layered vector PDF, then we can bring it in through this command. It'll create line work. It'll join all the little pieces together, remove vertices, uh, uh, simplify it a little, and then you still have to elevate your line work and whatever else, but at least you have line work to work with, okay? So let's take a look at that. We'll say in CADNET, PDF import. We'll pick the PDF file that we want to import. It's going to ask us, it's going to analyze it and tell us, okay, do you want to keep the layers? I'll say yes. Do you want to join nearest and reduce vertices? Yes. These are some great options that are in there, and we'll say insert the line work. So it looks at it, it says, okay, where do you want to put it? I'll put it at zero, 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 comma, zero, rotation angle zero, and this is at 50 scale imperial, um, but uh, we're just, you know, so we're going to go ahead and scale it to 50. Now, once it comes in, we'll measure some things and check and see how we did with that. So I was going to let this run in real time to show you how long it takes, but I discovered uh, with Camtasia and the, and the camera running it, took quite a bit longer. Without it, it took about 30 seconds, uh, and I checked it. So um, here it is. Um, we can zoom in, and you can see that we have line work. All the contours have been joined. Um, all the other uh, line work is here ready to work with. So um, you can, these need to be joined or whatever. But, but the idea is you've got line work to start with. You're not just tracing everything. So again, the tools are there to work with it from here, but the main thing is you've got your line work from your PDF, so you can proceed from here. So that's CADNET PDF import. That's our first power tool for today. Okay, next up, GIS. Uh, the GIS program has a lot of functionality. Uh, quite a bit of it is in survey, a lot of things you can do. But one of the things that people do purchase GIS and add it to their select suites is for Google Earth, uh, imagery, satellite imagery, to in, insert that pretty much automatically. Um, you have to, of course, geo-reference your drawing, has to be on real 
coordinates. You have to assign the state plane or, or whatever the projection is uh, to your drawing. And then you basically just say uh, GIS uh, imagery and say uh, insert Google Earth. Uh, clear that out of the way there. Place Google Earth. And it says, what do you want to call the image? Because it's going to create an image. So we're going to call this uh, Google Earth 3. And make sure you know where it's going to place that JPEG. Uh, do you want to pick from screen or map? I'll say from a screen. And you just simply window the screen. And it says, OK, here's the resolution. What type do you want? We'll take Arial. What layer do you want it on? And it just drops the Google Earth image into your drawing. So it gives you a good reference of what's in the area. Uh, are you on the right track? Are things lining up pretty well? Of course, it's Google Earth, so you know you don't have precision necessarily, uh, but at least you have a good check, a little background check. So insert Google Earth image from GIS. A lot of people add that to their select suites really just for that one command, although there's other things in there, but that one is really handy to have, and I highly recommend that one. Okay, that's GIS insert Google Earth. Okay, next up, hydrology. Hydrology, again, tons of tools in here. But what a lot of people need to do, occasionally or more often, is they need to draw a profile of a pipe run. Okay, they need to draw pipes and structures on a profile. And it's painful to watch them do that manually, but some people do. So if you ever need to do that, here's just one thing you could do with hydrology is draw a pipe run, okay? So here we go. We're in hydrology. I've got a surface here. I'm gonna set up what's called a pipe network, okay? And I'm gonna create a new one, and we're gonna call this PT6-2 uh, for a second try. I was practicing. Uh, create it now. The rest of the settings are fine. We're gonna leave those. I'm not gonna go over those with you right now. And now I'm gonna come in here and say network, um, draw a um, create a sewer structure network create a sewer structure okay we're going to pick on the screen so you pick the location of your first structure it picks up the surface elevation to set the rim it has a, a default depth you can adjust all this but I'm going to just add another structure by picking right here it's more than 300 feet so it says it warns me I say that's fine and I'm going to put in a third structure uh, right here We'll pick one, pick structure location right here, okay? And let's just put in a fourth one just for fun, okay? Pick point, and we'll come down here. So now these could be, you could be designing, you could be just replicating an existing design, but now I've got a pipe network. I can adjust all of the rims and elevations and pipes, everything. But what I can also do when I'm done with that is what I wanted to show you is what a lot of people can use it for is just drafting, okay? I'm going to say draw a sewer network in profile, okay? It's going to bring up the settings. I'm going to go from one to four. There's a bunch of settings in here. I'm going to say draw the existing ground. I, it brings up the profile command. I've got lots of settings in here. I'm going to take the defaults, or the ones that I set up earlier, actually, and I'm just going to say put it right here. And there is my pipe run, okay? There's my existing ground. There's the pipe run going down, the structures. Again, you can change the structures, the slopes, or the pipe material, the pipe size, everything. But I've drawn a pipe profile that quickly. So if you're drawing profiles of pipe runs, storm drain, or any utilities, in fact, um, even without structures, and you just need to draw profiles of utilities, this is a great command, a uh, great function uh, of, of uh, possibilities inside of hydrology pipe networks. Okay, so there's the next one. Thanks. Okay, less than a minute left. So here is a power tool for something awesome you can do with Point Cloud Basic. Okay, I've imported a Point Cloud and brought it into Point Cloud uh, software, an LAZ file. I'm going to take a look at it. Here's the viewer uh, scene. We'll zoom up and take a look at this thing. Bring it over here a little. You can see it's an interesting point cloud with a bunch of piles of material. Okay, so we're going to go view from the top. And we're going to come into this pile right here. We're going to go to our action tab. And we're going to say create a polyline. And we're going to do a polyline around this pile right here. OK, 
Okay, we'll just kind of go around here quickly. It's a little rough, but it'll do. Okay, so we'll say, okay, close, end action. And then we're going to say, select by a polyline right here. And we'll pick that part of the cloud. And we'll say, create a tin. And we'll say, create a Carlson tin. And we're going to call this pile three. Ooh, not pile, pile, pile three. Okay. And we say, go take the defaults, and we make ourselves a Carlson tin right out of just that part of the point cloud. Done. We come back over to our drawing, which is right here, and we'll say, okay, let's view it. We'll say view, and we'll say view that surface of pile three. And there it is. We'll take a look at it in the viewer. Oh, there it is. There's that pile. Okay. And then we'll say, here's the bottom elevation is 41.6. Okay. So we'll come up here in civil and we'll say surface, give me a volume by one surface. Okay. And we're going to tell it to use pile three and we're going to tell it to use 41.6 as the base elevation. And it's going to calculate and there's our cut and fill. It's about 34,000 cubic meters of material. Point cloud basic, one of the many things it can do. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, get in touch with your reseller, your sales rep, myself, anybody. But this will give you a clue about what's in some of these other programs. And hopefully some select suites might come your way for Christmas. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, and we'll see you next year. Take care.